Uh, hello again. Uh, here we have another set of challenges um, for chimney sweeps uh, and one which we're going to be using some different kit today to sweep this Contura um, contemporary stove. You notice that the, the glass is, is rounded um, and it sits on a pedestal. And you'll notice if you look to the top here, there's a, a short vitreous section with an inspection plate. Now normally this wouldn't be here, this would just come straight, the twin wall would come straight into the top of the um, wood burner itself. But, and this is because uh, this is for training purposes. So think in your mind for the whole of the rest of this, that this is coming straight out of the top um, with twin wall. Rounded glass, um, open it up. And when we get the video to come inside here in a moment, you'll notice that all of the fire bricks in here uh, are vermiculite and they're shaped um, specifically to fit um, this stove. I have no idea how much they cost, but I suspect um, a lot of money. So first thing that we have to do is to make sure that the door doesn't slide back on us when we're sweeping. Uh, this Contura has a button underneath. Uh, you press the button and the door should stay locked back. So that's now locked in place. If not, sometimes they don't work very well or some stoves uh, just don't have anything like that. Um, I usually construct some kind of prop from a couple of large magnets and jam it between there and this um, face here so that the stove door can't shut while you're doing it. Because again, I su suspect that this glass is a very expensive um, uh, piece of glass um, to buy. This has a riddling grate and it's part of the uh, air supply usually. So during the sweeping process, I'm gonna make sure that the riddling grate is shut so that um, to minimize the amount of uh, horizons that can actually fall down into this area here, that will make our dust seal at the bottom here even the more stronger because uh, less horizons are gonna be um, coming out. So first and foremost, we need to get the, uh, the vermiculite bricks out of uh, the wood burner and again uh, this is where your magnetic prop comes in well because not many of us have got three hands and uh, useful though it might be so we can prop up the throat plate with our handy prop and fiddle these bricks out i'll do this one first so you can actually see it with a camera you may need to employ a thin scraper just to get under the corner of the vermiculite and ease that one out. Being careful not to drop the prop. Um, you'll notice they're shaped, all sorts of chamfers on them. You're not gonna be cutting that out yourself, so be very careful with it, especially as they get old and fragile. It's worth noting which way round these go in. Um, I always take the stuff out from one side. The side that I take it out of is the side that I lay it down so I know which is the right way going in back in. You may want to mark the back with something for up and down. In this case, obviously, that's not um, too much of a problem. And then over to the other side. Again, just fiddle these bricks out. This, though this stove has been fired, um, as you can see from some of the markings on the bricks, uh, over time these will get very fragile. So uh, there's going to come a point when you're not going to be able to do this quite as easily. And then finally, the back brick comes out. Putting this back is the reverse of it. The back brick, need, the back brick needs to go in first because. The, the edges of the other bricks fit against here. You can't get them in afterwards. Let me take out our prop. And take out the shaped vermiculite throat plate. There it is. Put that away somewhere safely where it's not gonna get broken. So, now we're into the stove itself and it's torch and mirror time. So, uh, I'll get the mirror set up so you can see what the issue is with this um, wood burner is. Contura is a Swedish make and like many Swedish and Scandinavian stoves where the normal sweeping practice is from the top down, they have this um, solid arrangement in here 
that protects the wood burner from the sweeping process, which is a, um, a brush on the, on the end of a ball. This particular one here, this is part of the heated air wash system, uh, and this baffle that you can see here is completely solid. So we have to get around that somehow. And up in the chimney, up in the flue, above selecting another mirror, we also need to get around that lug that you can see here. So, quite a challenge for the kit. Uh, we've left the inspection hatch out, so that you can have a look at that from the top now. So that's what we're going to be getting around. Okay, is that lit up enough? So quite flexible rods and equipment required for this particular sweep. The basic tenets of our, of our sweeping process are exactly the same. Very important that we get the dust seal right and controlled. Oh. And very important that we protect the customer's property from our, our arisings. And very important that we protect our kit from the sweeping process. So we'll be using much lighter kit this time. These are um, eight millimeter rods. Very, 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 very flexible um, with um, uh, a rapid light load ahead uh, with 2.7mm uh, strands in. First part of the job is to introduce the head into the flue. So up inside here and you just need to feel your way into the flue around the various nooks and crannies. So now we're in. The rod itself is in the flue. There he is. Now comes the tricky part because we need to introduce our rod guide into that space. Remember the big load that we saw and those one, two sharp edges now that we need to protect our kit against. This is another one where you have to just feel your way around with this stuff, with this rod guide, to get it into the right position. So having got it up as far as we can, it's now stuck on that corner. So with a bit of luck, we can just kind of fiddle it around there. introduce it into the flue. Yeah, so I haven't got the rod guide up into the flue itself. You can just reach up on this one and pull the back of the rod guide forward to get it around the bend. Now we're well into the flue with the rod guide. You can see that up in there. We can now get on with um, getting our dust seal to the system. For this we're going to be using this setup here. It's especially designed for this smaller size rod guard on the 8mm rods because it fits through just like that. <coughs> and then we would make the, uh, the mag magnet seal against the side of the wood burner as we have seen before. You'll notice how much tension there is in this. That's because of the severe bend um, in the rods. Yeah. Once you start getting the magnets on, it should all stiffen up nicely. There we go. You'll notice this is curved, so we can't be using flat magnets on the top, unfortunately. So multiple smaller hand magnets. And on this particular one on the top, this lip will produce a nice seal for you. Same on the bottom. And you know, 
it wouldn't be the end of the world if you were to just run a bead of um, gaffer tape around the bottom there just to make that seal should you not have enough magnets or it might be a bit leaky there we go so now it's the same process introduce the rods manually or if we feel any constriction we can use it to you can use our drill to ease the rods around the bend the one thing to be very wary of with these 8 mil rods is they are very very flexible which is a blessing because they can get around anything but when they're in a flue and you come across a constriction or a change of direction the harder you push the more they bend in the flue so you can get quite a lot of rod up um, but the actual end isn't going anywhere so being able to ease them around uh, with some rotational as well as pushing on the bottom can help the situation. Again, not too fast, very gentle. There we go. I suspect that's around um, the the 45 degree that's taking it up to the vertical but no doubt about it this is always going to be a challenging sweep All the time with this, most of the work that I can, I'm doing manually. I'm only introducing the rotation to help it up the flue. This isn't part of the cleaning process. Now some of you might be thinking, well, why don't you just put some stiffer rods on here? Uh, which you'd be quite, you know, you, you'd be quite able to do. You'd use an eight mil as a leader and then you would use probably 12 mil for the rest of the sweep. I've already tried that and it was very difficult to um, get the 12 mil back down. In fact, it was impossible after a while. Nice little half rod. Notice how when I'm trying to push, this is bending. Work with these 8 mil rods is never a test of strength, it's a subtle art really. The other thing that's quite difficult with them is to understand when you're at the top. Because of that um, springiness in the rod, you can be at the top and not know it. I reckon I'm at the top now, so I'm going to stop. That feels like 
the end of the rod getting caught in the top of the rod liner. Just as it comes through. And that's it, that's it. And now we'll wait. But notice because of the, um, the friction in the system, I'm having to take the bend out of these rods away from the rod guide. Okay, we've taken a number of rods down the flue now. So now would be a good time to check and see what was actually coming down. With this nice clear um, <clears throat> dust control solution that we have on here, we'll be able to see stuff started to build up down in the bottom now, but it'd be nice to get hands on and actually have a look at it and see what it is. So just deconstruct the top bit, um, torch, and just have a look inside, grab a handful of it, and have a check over it. What's in there? Is that confirming what you thought, or is there something that you now need to be more mindful of? And having satisfied yourself either way, the solution back. And again, during that process, we, uh, we lost a glove. So rather than taking it off this time, I'm just gonna put another glove on top of it. When your hands get sweaty, it's sometimes difficult to get these onto a sweaty hand, but that's okay. So, here we are. I'll go back at it. And we'll be getting the rods down now to the bottom, sweeping as we go. In this case, because of the uh, complication of go by getting around that bend, it's not quite so easy to uh, disconnect the drill in front of me. I always find it easier to disconnect the drill than disconnect the rods. The reason being that if you disconnect this, it gets real flippy. And you could injure yourself, knock something off a shelf. The other thing to be very wary of about using this smaller, lighter um, 8mm kit is that the cleaning head can actually get jammed in the top of the rod guide. 
which can be quite touchy. But I think we're in right to the top now. So uh, two things to do. The bit that's above the rod guide now hasn't been cleaned. So we've got to think about that when we're, when we're deconstructing all this. And we have to get this out. We have to get the rod and the head out. So we'll be taking the ones off at the top. And these two half ones at the top. And just bringing it down to a level where we've still got this protection here. Bearing in mind that this might be full of all sorts of stuff now that we've swept out of the system. So now we can um, extract the rod guide. We can extract the head. And we can extract the rod. But we've still got this little piece here to, to clean. So whilst I'm not going to do it, I'm just going to talk you through the process. You need to become the rod guide as much as you can, or you need to have a shorter piece that you can put into here to protect your kit against that sharp edge. So if you had a shorter piece of this pipe, you could just put it in the top here, um, keep, it, keep your rod and uh, your equipment away from that sharp edge, and basically sweep from there to there. You'd have to estimate what it might be, but we might be able to use something like this to just rest against that edge. Because we're not going to be needing, perhaps, to get right up into this flue, because we, we don't need to go further up the flue. We only need to clean um, this part here. I keep the dust solution like it is here, so we can move this around freely. But I would have the hoover running in this space here, so that anything that did come out in that process, the hoover would, would, would catch up, as would my body here, protecting this space and stopping stuff coming out. So, up we go. Back to how it was before. We've got to fiddle around to get the actual cleaning head into the flue and then introduce the, the head, the, the, um, the rod guide, afterwards. Right. So, we're into there. We introduce our rod guide to just underneath that really sharp edge, if you can remember. And now, we're into that section of the flue so we can sweep sweep in here you might also consider having a longer whip in this section um, because once we're under this part of the flue it opens up into the top of the burner so if you've got a bigger light whip you could maybe clean the top of there um, at the same time and out we come Kit away, you may have some skin off your knuckles, um, pride intact, but this is a very tricky sweep. And as you've seen, we've been able to manage it with these uh, eight mil, eight mil rods. Having got all of that done, we just need to put the, um, the vermiculite um, fire bricks back in, noting the order that they came out, and um, that's the job done. So, thank you very much.